Mm. Right. We have to romanticize the graduation of our child in order for us to go 18 years of work. We have to romanticize the, a baby's first steps in order for mm. us to deal with diaper changing. Be it now, and then it will come to you. You can't wait till you get it to become that thing. I want to welcome you guys to episode four of the DNA of Greatness podcast. I'm your host with the most, Aquarius Wave, and this is the Tower of Power, the man of the hour. Coach Bobby Bluefield, would you like to say what's up to the people? I want to say what's up, guys. Uh, uh, let, let's get into all this this DNA of greatness. I'm here to provide perspective, storytelling, fun anecdotes, and correlations that makes that make the, the hard stuff make sense for you. So let's get into it. Let's get into it. I like that. So today we'll be talking about a subject that honestly came to mind before we even started filming this podcast and, you know, we um, reignited the dream, right? And it came from one of Coach's BTY symposiums, and he said something, and it stuck with me that day and every day since then. And it was essentially how just because you love something doesn't mean you're always going to like it, right? And you use the example of even like your own kids, your own family, like the people that you love, it might be your spouse, whoever it may be, is you may have a deep love for that person that is unshakable. However, that doesn't mean every single day you're going to like them, right? And so... That spurred me to really get into the subject and dig a little deeper on, you know, the love-hate relationship with our own dream, right? So that being said, Unc, I just, I want to get a little background reference as far as where that idea came from, like where you were first exposed to it and when you really started to implement that as a part of your life. Right. So uh, before I start that, uh, Aquarius, I want to... I wanted to publicly, I told Aquarius, I wanted to publicly tell him uh, yeah. what, a, what a, a gift he has been to me, right? Oh, and uh, and I, I texted him before, I texted you before the call, before the podcast, and I said, I don't want to tell you before, I wanted, to, I, wanted, I wanted the emotion to be raw and real, right? Right. Um, for those watching, Aquarius sent me a text about three or four hours ago, and I was just getting into... Uh, what he was texting me about, which was Unk. Calls me Unk because I'm old. Uh, he said, Unk. <laughs> let it fool you. How, how, are the, how are the videos going that you said you would do when you were, when you were on your way to, to practice? So for those who missed that, that video, uh, I said as part of my systematizing my, my new dream, you know, I talk about creating systems. Uh, one of my systems was to make sure that when I drove to practice, uh, mm. I'm a football coach. When I drove to practice, I would do uh, a video, and that would be one of my action items. Um, and and I, I told the audience and myself that by doing that in such a short drive, which is about 10 minutes, uh, it would give me practice and keeping my talk short, uh, but also give me an action item that I, would, that I could do and live up to that would be in direct alignment with my dream of of providing more content for for my my viewers and my followers, uh, mm-hmm. so I when he texted me when you texted me Aquarius I was I, it just it hit me hard because I'm a coach and 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 one yeah. thing I teach people or or not even teach one thing I yell at people about <laughs> is that one day you're gonna wish you still had me pushing you yeah and I and I. I I harp in and I drive home the fact that that over time the number of people that hold us accountable that that want the best from us that that expect and demand that we continue to figure out what the best best of us is that number of people goes by the wayside every year right when wow. you when you when you're born your parents kind of want that your teachers want that your coaches want that your siblings want that your friends want that but as you get older the people around you who, who continue to extract from you your best, it dwindles. Absolutely. And so when you find people who are like that and you still want to be that, number one, appreciate them. Number two, don't push them away. So, mm. so you are one of the people that still see greatness in me yeah. at age 50. And more importantly... Because I have this de- this demeanor that, that that very few people push up against, 
regularly. Yeah. And because of that, the number of people who hold me accountable to what they see in me is even smaller. That's and a great so, point. And so I, I appreciate the fact that there's somebody out there that's still trying to figure out how to make Coach Bobby the best version. And it isn't always comfortable. Um, it isn't always fun. We don't always want the thing. We don't always want the people to tell us what 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 to do, even when we told them we want that, right? Yeah. In the workout, in the in the course, in the relationship, in the friendship. You know, when 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 they when they ask you to do what you told them to to, to tell you to do, in the moment we don't always want it. So, but people who stay around and continue to make you do that. Um, are vital to growth. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to publicly acknowledge that. And it ties right into, into this, into this uh, topic today, because the idea, to answer your question, the idea came from always thinking about things differently and thinking about mm -hmm. things in ways that, that frame uh, normal topics in different ways. So everyone talks about goal setting and dreams and dream boards and vision boards and all these things, right? But one day I was I was sitting or driving or something. This is this is by 10 years ago on my original blog when I was still mm -hmm. in finance. When blogs was a when thing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> when, when people, when people were still thing. reading. Uh <laughs> the, the original content, right? <laughs> <laughs> and I and I talked about this notion of marrying your dream. And uh -huh. I, I put it in the context of fitness initially, but as, as all my dreams um, and all my dream talking and dream explaining um, shows you guys is that it's always, it's always the same stuff. So yeah. when I say marry it, what that means is when you are in a relationship with something, with a person, right? It's always more fun in the beginning. Absolutely. It's always more fun in, when you're dating that person, that boy, that girl, that woman, that man. It's always more fun in the, in the nuances and the beginning and the uniqueness and the newness and freshness of the yeah. relationship. Always more fun, mm -hmm. right? Similarly, it's always exciting when you first get your running shoes, Yep. It's always exciting when you first get accepted into school. It's always exciting when you first decide, I want to be a speaker or I want to do music. It's always exciting, right? But eventually, right, in the relationship, you see that person in the morning when the breath is not fresh, when That's they haven't right. showered yet, right? Mm -hmm. Eventually, you see some quirks about them that you didn't see in the beginning, that aren't perfect. Eventually, all those things happen, and what was fun becomes less fun. And so that's different than when you decide to marry something. Mm. Because when you date something, you can leave. Absolutely. When you say we're just dating, you can leave. When you say I want to marry you, you are accepting all the nuances, the ups and downs, the good and bad, knowing, if you're smart, knowing that there will be ups and downs, and nuances, and good and bad, but you're willing to accept it. So once I had that vision of of a dream, right? Whether it's fitness, whether it's whether it's music, whether it's speaking, whether it's going to school, it totally made sense. And so then I started seeing all these correlations be, between relationships in life and relationships with your dream. And so yeah. that that thing you saw at the at, at the symposium was just one more um, anecdote that revealed itself, right? I don't always like my son, mm -hmm. but I love him. Yeah. I don't always like being a dad to my daughter, right? Uh, you know, a, a guy who was once a twenty year old certainly doesn't always enjoy being a father of a twenty year old daughter. <laughs> you know <laughs> what I mean? But. I Absolutely. love the fact that I am the first man she models her idea of what a man is. Right? I love that idea that I'm I'm the first version of a man she sees and embodies and learns about. So I want so I love that enough 
to not to not let all the all the dislikes along the way of being a father get in the way. So yeah, you don't always love it. I mean, like it, but what you love, you're willing to to endure the ups and downs of the likes because you love that thing so much. So I want to dig a little more into um, relationship. And as far as most of us would not view us as having relationships with the certain aspects of our lives, right? Nope. We view relationship as what happens between us and people. Right. And this was even a conversation that came up with me and my pops uh, quite recently where he brought up how he recognized his relationship with money, right? And how that evolved over yep. time. And I didn't know he was the same kind of mindset as I was when it came to this, because when I talk about a relationship with money, most people kind of zone out or blank out, right? They don't think of themselves having a relationship with something that is quote unquote inanimate, mm-hmm. but it's really the stories that we tell mm-hmm. ourselves. So I wanted to dig into the romanticization of the dream. Like before we marry it, right? Before we uh, we make any sort of commitment, we have this image in our head yes. of what the dream is that we want. Yes. And what I oftentimes refer to is like in music, everybody wants to be Kanye West, you know, when he has 21 Grammys and the biggest songs in the world and he's the biggest star ever, right? That's what they see. They see the red carpet. Yep. So that's the image they have of the yep. dream, which is perfectly fine. But most people who have that dream don't also have the dream of being in a studio 18 hours a day, right? Yep. And working on their craft and doing the networking necessary and handling their business in a certain way. And so I wanted to start at this baseline of, again, using the analogy of a relationship, which is in the beginning of a relationship, that honeymoon stage is really a romanticization of what the person is or what the relationship yes. is. Yes, right? it is. And kind of drawing that parallel. Right, it, uh, and actually so, wrote that down. So, so, I'm, so for mm-hmm. those who are watching this, my book has got to get done. Right. Oh, yeah. One of my books. One of my books is how the relationship with your dream is just like the relationships in your life. Wow. How the relationship with your dream is just like the other relationships in your life. Right. Mm. Come on, get, now I'm going to finish it now. I, I'm going to finish mm-hmm. it. It has, it has to. to this is your this right. is your urgency right. call. Right. Yeah, so there's PSA. 20 there's 20 items on there right now. It's more than that. So I got to carve it down. But one of them mm-hmm. is romanticizing. Oh, wow. The, the, the relationship. Right. And and so I was I was literally in in um, the waiting room when we were going to doing a checkup. We were doing a checkup for uh, for Maria, my wife and our mm. s- second ch- Amari, our second child. And I'm reading this like parenting magazine or, or one of the one of the magazines, motherhood or whatever. I'm reading it. And there's an article. I, I haven't found it again. I wish I could. But it was explaining how how we're wired to think we enjoy parenthood, <laughs> like we're like in our DNA. Speaking, speaking of DNA, yeah, in our DNA, we're wired to think parenthood is enjoyable, and it goes through this 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 bullet. And parents will get mad at me. I'm a parent. Get mad all you want, right? Um, it goes through this this litany of, of of reasons why you would never purposely do this. You would mm-hmm. never, if you knew how hard parenting was, and you thought about it objectively, you would never do it, right? But we're wired in several ways to do it. We're wired to to do things because the the human species needs to continue. So if our brain was always analytical and objective about what was going to happen once you procreated, we wouldn't procreate. That's a great point. Right? I'm thinking of right. just like the laundry you wouldn't list do of it. things no way right you would now do it, that come with parenting. Listen, Absolutely listen not. Man, you're not going right? to sleep again. You're going to get attitude. You're never going to get rewarded. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Wow. So in that, yeah. in that, in that article, and it was, it was by a psychologist or scientist or something. So it, it was, it was thought out. But it talked about one of the ways that that our brains wire it is we romanticize, and to some degree correctly. And as a parent, I can identify with this. In many ways, it is correctly because this will be true. We romanticize the positive moments so much that they outweigh the, the, the grind. Wow. Right? And in part, our brain has to do that in order for us 
to partake in this journey, mm. right? We have to romanticize the graduation of our child yeah. in order for us to go 18 years of work. We have to romanticize the, a baby's first steps in order for mm. us to deal with diaper changing, yeah. right? So our dreams in many ways have to be romanticized in order to partake on the journey, right? If you knew... Right. That Kanye, Kanye spent 12 to 18 hours in the studio for 12 to 18 years before he made it. You wouldn't do it. <laughs> so you have to romanticize that part in your brain in order to make the other stuff work. Right? Mm -hmm. So I get it. You have to romanticize being a D1 athlete and all the mm -hmm. girls who chase you and all the, all the endorsements yeah. you get and the, 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 the potential of getting drafted in order to, to even begin to partake in the journey to get there. So that's why we do it. So, so, so part of, part of what we have to do is understand, and we'll get into why we have to overcome that because as soon as you get up at 5 a.m. to go work out or you're in the studio at, at midnight and no one's around. It's out of there. Now it's gone. Now it's gone. So, so <laughs> yeah, the romanticized part gets you, gets you going, but mm -hmm. unless you sit down and marry your vision, and understand going into it that I need to have tools, I need to have uh, resources, I need to have strategies to deal with the inevitability of the grind. Mm. Then you then then you can't finish it, yeah. right? But the first part that you talked about, that part is is integral for our brain to to be able to begin this long journey of what a dream is. A dream is something that's hard by nature. So because it's hard. To be a parent, to be to be a speaker, to have a podcast, to go to med school, because it's hard. Our brain has to has to fantasize and romanticize it in order for us to begin it. Absolutely, you know what I'm saying. So absolutely. So speaking of that, um, this is not hopefully jumping the gun for our audience, but it's really also uh, an answer and a question at the same time, which is when you first have that dream start to calcify in your mind, right? When it starts to become something to you. Are you also in the process of who do I have to become in the becoming of this thing, right? Because I question. think some of the greatest hurdles come from that disconnect of it feels so painful. The distance between you and your dream feels so painful because you feel that you're just not the person who can do that. And Again, I, I, see, I knew you're going to get this one. It's good. This is going to hit home for you. It's good. And it's been a real new thought process for me since I've been, you know, ending my day sometimes watching this show, uh, The Foods That Built America. Everybody from the Heinz to the Kellogg's of the world, et cetera. And you realize this was a person in a kitchen somewhere. Yes. This is a person tinkering, experimenting. You know, Reese's, he was a guy fired from Hershey's, was a farmer, had 10 kids he had to take care of. And he's experimenting with different chocolates. And trying to find what he could put in the chocolate. And eventually, after a thousand tries, comes up with peanut butter. Mm -hmm. And how do I get the chocolate to stick? And he's going through this entire process. But I'm thinking it's not like the invention isn't because it's so hard to discover chocolate and peanut butter and how to make it work. It's you have to buy into I'm the type of person who creates an invention mm -hmm. that changes the right. world. That's the buy-in, buy right? right? So it's like right. the becoming of a, of a D1 athlete, I think, is or uh, an Olympic athlete, et cetera, I think is one of the best analogies of like the distance between where you are and where your dream actually is, right? Because sometimes you can say, okay, it's age. I'm just not old enough yet. Sometimes you can say physical prowess. I'm just not physically, you know, in shape or whatever. I'm not ready yet. Right. But in truth, those things only come when you're fully bought into, I see the vision of who I can actually be. Like I see this figure of coach Bobby in my head so you're already in the dream. Right. Like there's a difference between the person yearning for it and the person who's living right. the dream, as we call right. it. And so what I realize is in music, there's a huge parallel, which is, you know, entertainment and music is one of those places, just like social media, where you can create one piece of content and your whole life changes and you're in the game, right? You don't have to be 18 hours for 18 years right. in the studio, right? To perfect your craft. It's simply you believing, oh, I deserve to be in that right. place. And so that's really what I wanted to get down to is this um, this idea or this reality of 
like the romanticization of the dream, like you're saying, is necessary. And it's also necessary to create a vision of what this thing looks like in its completion, yeah. how it feels, how it smells, tastes, and touch. And to be honest, those who can stay in that place and those who can have a sort of resonance with that place will actually get to that place with uh, relatively more ease. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like the Serena and Venus, the, the Williams sisters, their pops was ingraining these thoughts within them, had a game plan for them. And so by the time they were 14, 15 years old, they were the best players in the world. Right. Whereas others around them, it was until they were 27 right. because they're working backwards. Right. You're having to fight the other images in their right. head. Right? And so I wanted to take the discussion then to this point, which is like, Unc, I know your story of you being eight years old and already seeing yourself as a football mm -hmm. player. Like, that's a reality for some, but I feel like for most people, that dream has been stripped from you for so right. long already. Right. Like for the maybe maybe until you're two or three years old, they say you can be anything, right? right? But then from three to eight, you're being told, you know, you got to find something to be realistic about. People are laughing at you when you right. say you want to be a certain thing, et cetera. So I'm just curious as to like what your thoughts are around that of like, again, being married not only to this this concept of what could be, but marry to who you're becoming in that process. This episode of the DNA of Greatness podcast is brought to you by the BTY Symposium. The BTY Symposium is an immersive workshop aimed at getting the student athletes the tools they need to achieve their ultimate dreams. Whether a one day or multiple day format, the symposiums provide an all-inclusive environment that nourishes athletes physically, mentally, and emotionally. Now back to the show. So, that leads right to like three more of my of my points, right? Mm. And I, kind of, I wrote them all down here. Um, again, of the 20 that are going to be in the book. So if you, the heart, so you're right. So when I, when I was young, when I was young, I just naturally had this vision of playing football. Mm. And because of that, I had an intimate relationship with that, rela with that relationship. Right mm. with with that inanimate thing, I had an intimate like we were boys from from like yeah when no one else listened to me, you know that dream listened to me when no one else believed in me, that dream believed in me and vice versa. Wow, um, it wow. wasn't as easy with finance. It wasn't as easy with yeah. with you know being a family person. All my four Fs, right? It was it was it was easy, but it not not even as easy even with my fitness, my fitness brand, my fitness yeah. business. So only the first F football was relatively easy. The other three were not as easy. Um, finance, family, and fitness. This new one was speaking and, and, and identifying myself as a thought leader in leadership spaces, um, in, in greatness chasing spaces, is not as easy. But mm -hmm. this is how I think about it, is... If you can sit there, and for the guys watching this, I want you guys to really, really try this. If you can sit there and really, like, close your eyes or think about that vision of you being a rapper or a musician or an artist or a writer or a doctor, if you can really put that into a material thing in your head, a person, a friend, a little kid, a big kid, whatever, if you can literally put it into into an image of a person and then mm. do these three things along your journey. It'll help with the other part of it. If it's not natural, mm. like you said, if it's not natural and, and you lose kind of a crystal idea of what the end result is, like, yeah. like when you, when you first started and you romanticize it, being on stage in front of thousands gets you pumped, but sometimes you lose that and it's not crystal clear. Like you with me, which is why I love you. You, you with me, you know that, that I've been talking about, you know, speaking in, at the SAP Center or Oracle yeah. or at Staples Center, or I guess it's, what is it, uh, Crypto.com Arena for years. Mm -hmm. But even with me, that vision goes up and down, right? But I'm able to stay at it some because of these three things, right? So number one, mm -hmm. number one, you have to, you have to honor all the moments. So imagine a friend, mm -hmm. right? And you don't really know him that well or her that well, but you're sitting with them and you're like, I, I don't know where we're going, but I know you're sitting by yourself. 
So I'm going to sit here and listen to you. I'm going to sit here and talk to you. I don't know where you're from. I don't know. Where, I, don't, I don't know. But I know that no one else is talking to you. And I was kind of the same way when I first came to this school or this or this neighborhood. So I'm just going to sit here with you. And I'm actually getting te teary eyed a little bit because it makes me kind of think about that that moment. Like this dream, no one else thinks about you with me. Like no one thinks you can be a podcast that has that has thousands of followers. No one thinks you can be a speaker. No one thinks you can be a great mother because you because you come from you know the inner city and you, and your your mom left you, so you can't be a good mother, right? And so all 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 you have is me. All I have is you in this moment. So when you see your vision, and as that as that kid that no one else is talking to, then you at least in the moment, all you can do is give up yourself to it, wow. right? Wow. Give up yourself that's to okay. it. That's you know what I mean? And so that's yeah. step one: is honor. Yeah. Just honor where you're at. Mm -hmm. Like imagine yourself walking into a cafeteria in high school, and you've been the weird kid for the last year. Now you got a few friends, but now you see another kid. That's your dream. Yeah. And no one's, people are laughing at it, like whatever. You know, you come from, from inner city, you're going you really, you to be a president, really? You can go to, you can go to mm. Ivy League school, really? And you're like, you know what? I'm going to sit with that kid. I don't care what people think I am or laugh at me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sit with that kid. So that's step one. And then, even if you don't know where it's headed, just learn about it. Right? Just learn about music. Just learn about law. Just spend some time understanding. I would say a relationship won't last if you ain't willing to learn about the other party. Like if I don't learn what, what, what Amari likes or Jackie likes or my wife likes or what my, what my friends like or who they are, I, I can't be a good rela co-relationship person with his friend, father, husband, brother, son. I can just show up and expect me to tell them all about me and never learn. So now I sat down with this with this dream in the cafeteria. No one's talking to them. And I'm just sitting there. I'm listening. I'm learning. Like, okay, what? So mm. what? So with your dream, do the same thing. Just wow. learn about Spending it. Spending quality time just with quality, that dream. The quality time. Right. And wow. the last one is, is then this is one, this one's tricky. But again, I want you to visualize this. Now you walk away, right? And you're spending time outside of direct company with that dream, right? Mm -hmm. So we're chasing our dream of whatever it is, but we have other moments in our lives at work, at school, yeah. with our fr yeah. other friends that we're not in direct company of that dream, right? Mm -hmm. How do you speak about your dream when they oh. when they interact? Oh, my like goodness. Like if somebody okay. asks me, if somebody Ooh. says... Uh, Aquarius? What was it? What was his real name again? I mean, he's wow. kind of different, dude. So, wow. what I say in that moment defines my. Even though you're not there, it Correct. defines how I feel how do you about speak our about relationship. Me behind my back. So, what do you oh. say about about your diet or about your, your your new program to get to get fit? What do you say when you're around your fat friends and they ask wow. you about your diet? What do you say then? What do you say when you when when you're when you're alone and you're like I want to go to I want to go to Ivy League school but you're going to right now you're in the inner city with all your boys gang bang and sell drugs and and but you want to go to Harvard what do you yeah. say about your dream when your boys are are on the corner with you and you're doing that part of your life which is okay wow. but, but do you defend wow. it Wow Do you defend who you are when it's not easy Do you wow, defend what is, you want when it's not so easy good. That's, so That's a real relationship. I, like I'm even thinking right now, in every relationship you have, the better definition of how deep and intimate that relationship is is how how far extent you will go to defend it. Like I'm thinking of like Amari and Jackie, yep. right? It's like if somebody says something about Amari around Jackie, it's hands. Come on, it's hands. <laughs> even, if I, like, even, if I, even if I'm getting my whoop, my butt whooped. Correct. Correct. And regardless of how she felt about Amari that day, regardless of how he showed up, etc. At that Thank moment, you. that bond is so deep. Yeah. That relationship is so yeah. real. That's my little brother you're yeah. talking about. And so that really just calcified it for me. Like that just made it make sense for me yeah. right now. I said, wow, how do I talk about my 
Do I belittle it? Do I, am I do. ashamed of and it? And we do. I mean, Man, we saw you kicking too. it with... Right? Absolutely. I mean, we downplay it. I mean, we, I mean, he my boy, but he my boy, boy. Right? Yeah. And, oh. and then just yesterday, oh. you were playing with your boy Xbox, right? It was just you and him, right? The nerdy kid, the fat kid, the ugly girl, whatever it is, right? You're playing wow. Xbox, right? Because because no, your other friends were at a pool party. So now you called your other friend who who's not who's kind of weird, weird, and you play Xbox. And are you cool? And but then later on, when they invite you back to the pool party and he can't come, and they ask, "Oh, what you with? Uh, what's the name yesterday?" I mean, yeah, he my boy, but he ain't my boy, boy. Okay. Ooh, okay. We. Okay. Wow. Okay. So now you know, and so that's what, and and even though the friend didn't hear that, yeah, right. Even though it's it's still fractured it can the feel relationship. It. And it can feel it. And, yeah, That's the thing exactly. with your dream, right? And it's like, it. just like any other relationship, somebody can feel yeah. Yeah, they know. when you're not yeah, exactly. all the way there with them. Exactly. They know like all of a sudden, like, like you're with them and they pass by. Hey, hey, Coach Bobby. And you're like, yeah. Like, oh, really? Dude, when we were just hanging out yesterday, now you're just giving me the nod? Really? Wow. And so, again, if you if you just look at things differently, the the universe, energy, laws, all these things have been around for for years and decades and millennials, millenniums. So, if you just look for the commonalities in things, it's there, mm. right? And that's one way. If you, if you crystallize that in your in your head, it'll make you treat your dream much differently. Hopefully, oh man, that, hopefully. Nah, that hit home for me. That hit home for me. So that being said, again about you know, I, I love what this is going because it's almost like the stages of a relationship, right? So. First, you have that honeymoon stage. Mm-hmm. Well, even first with your dream, because I'm, I want to even correlate a dream like it's a almost like a brother or sister, like somebody you're born with, right? Because unlike a friend that's out there, the dream that you have, the vision for your life comes with you. Yeah. And it's like, you ain't choose it. It chose right, you exactly. in most cases. Yep. Right? Yep. And so you're born into this. And again, you can choose to say, oh, I got this brother who's this, that, and a third. Nobody really likes him. Everybody makes fun of him, et cetera. But you can start to say, am I going to claim this relationship? And like Uncle said, am I going to get to know, mm-hmm. you know, and bond within this yep. relationship or not? Right. And so, again, in the beginning stages, I love that is a true relationship. A true bond is really built through listening. Like you're absolutely right. The, the greatest relationships I've had in my life is when I was simply there observing, listening, getting to know, being interested yep. in, right? And even when we get into intimate relationships, it's the very same. Yep. The people who fall the most deeply in love are those who truly get to know one another. And so when I bring it in the context of you know your dream and the relationship you have with it, there is a process of falling in love, right? Like I, I talked about this in a recent video where our perception of love or our idea of love in the modern day is closer or more akin to trauma bonding oh, wow. right, than true yeah. love. And it's conditional. So it's when you show up in a certain way, then I'm going to show up in a certain Absolutely. way, right? Yep. When you do these things, then I'm going to display these certain yep. activities. Yep. So when it's, and this is where discipline and, you know, things of that nature even kick in. So you wake up at 5 a.m. Last night, you made a promise to yourself. I'm about to get up at 5 a.m. You know, I'm about to get the smoothie and get my, get my butt to the gym. 5 a.m. comes, alarm clock goes off, and now you're making conditions or putting conditions on your dream again. I'm just tired right now. I can't do it right now. I can't go yep. to the gym right now. Yep. Uh, maybe you know, 50 more minutes of sleep. Uh, maybe 30 more minutes. That's a conditional love that you're having with your dream. Now, does it mean that even if you do that thing, you're not going to resent it at first? You're going to resent yeah. it a little yeah, bit. Yeah. Of course, of course, but as yeah. soon as you step into it, right? In that moment of getting up at five and you've been getting up at seven, eight, nine, sometimes at noon, you know, for a majority of your days, you're going to resent that moment at first. You're going to be even mad at your dream saying, why are you making me do this? Right. And we talk about like the Olympic athletes. Um, I believe it was Usain Bolt. He said he hated every single day of practice, but he was also in love with it. Right. Arnold Schwarzenegger. They used to say he walked around the gym with a huge smile on his face when everybody else looked depressed. And he said, I was in love with the vision, though the workouts hurt. Yeah. Yeah. And so, again, that's that love-hate kind of polarity that happens with our dreams. And I feel like a lot of the resentment actually comes from when we neglect and ignore it. Right. 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 Just like in any other relationship, when does that resentment, that bitterness start to build up? 
is when we know we're not giving that dream our full self. And so we're not getting the result yep. that we want. Yep. Right? Yep. We're not getting the satisfaction. We leave practice mad because we know that we didn't put everything. Yeah. And so we're looking at the dream like, man, it's your fault. Right, See? exactly. If only exactly. if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't feel this yeah, way. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You, you catch what I'm throwing, right? And what, and what happens is, so, and, and, and unconditional love is one of my mm. 20. Oh, right? wow, of and course. I actually wrote about we just, it. We're going to hit all it. 20 today. That's crazy, man. So one of my first blogs back in the day was, mm. was, was called Unconditional Love of Work. Not that, mm. that of work. And the story in a nutshell basically just goes back to like I had these conditions uh, on my training that I needed – I didn't need to, but I – yeah, I needed to. I needed to have my trainings produce a certain 40-yard dash time and mm. a certain bench press reps, right? So that when I tested in college that it would all be worth it. So I would train the way I train now to say, you know, it's hard and, and then I would test, in, in, in college, you test. And I remember the first summer, it wasn't good enough. I mean, I, I forgot what number it was for the reps on the bench press and a 40-yard dash, but it, but it, neither of them was good enough for me. So mm-hmm. played the season. Next summer, same thing. This is the summer of 91. Same thing. Uh, trained all summer like crazy up at UC Davis, you know, got bigger, got stronger. The results, 40-yard dash time too slow for me. Bench press reps too too few too few for me. Yeah, that that season still played the season right. They still they didn't cancel the season. I I realized that they were gonna have a season either way, and I had to play either way. And and yeah. as long as I was okay with my process and my journey, then I wasn't gonna let the result put me in a funk and have me on a sideline mentally for two or three weeks going into a season. So I let Mm. go of all my expectations of what my training was supposed to produce. Mm. Long story short, my third year in college, my best season ever of my life. Best Best year, best season ever of my life. Right? And so the story says, once you let go of a need for that thing to do something for you, and put it all on yourself, then the relationship begins. Like, I, I'm going to love my son regardless. I'm going to train him regardless. I'm going to bring my, my wife coffee, whether we're fighting or not. I'm going to do all these things because I love the relationship, right? The second part to that, which you, you'll love, so good. is then so good. you flip it completely on his head. Mm. And you say, I'm not going to expect anything from them. Yeah, which is hard to do. I mean, I'll admit it. Of course, Bobby, now you now you now you're going too far. It's hard to do. It's hard to do <laughs> you, you want you nothing. want some love back, so it's hard to do. Of course, yeah, you but, want some reciprocity. But when you do yeah. this, when you say, "I am not going to expect anything from you, but I'm going to have yes. standards for me." Yes, on what I do, on what I do. standing ovation for. I'm going to have standards yep. for what I do, and That's so right. when I'm calm. Before I get any feedback that might not be what I want, I'm going to determine what the good vision of this part of me looks like and what standards does he do. And I'm going to hold hold myself to those standards, regardless of what the hell they do. Uh, I have to have to get into this. And I didn't know when this was going to be relevant. Um, let me see if I can find the exact page. So there is a passage in this book. It's called Conversations with God, mm-hmm. right? This is a highly recommended Conversation book right here. Book? Make sure, make sure to get your hands on this. It's called with Conversations God. with God. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant book. And it will break a lot of the concepts that you even have about the idea and the concept of God is right. Mm-hmm. So it's this man and basically he's literally having a conversation in the midst of who's one of it his by? Who's it by? times. His name is um, Neil Donald Walsh. Okay, I might have read it. This is like a bestseller, that. dude. When this came out with this little simple cover, it probably sold like half, you know, uh, about fifty million copies or some crazy. I might have read that right? actually. You probably yeah. have. It's old, right? It's one it's of those old, where you you it's keep old. it in your yeah. yeah, you keep this in your life. Yeah. This is something you continue to go back to. So there's a passage in here when he's having a conversation about relationships, right? And he's asking God, like, how do you, how do you? have a successful relationship because I've had all these broken relationships after broken relationships. And even my marriage now, 
it's like it never seems to truly be fulfilling. I'm not doing enough or I feel like she's not doing enough, et cetera. And basically the response is something that it's something that I've put into practice and it's literally transformed the entire dynamic of every relationship I have, right? Which is exactly what you're saying. But how it's worded is this, is when you finally realize the purpose of relationships, right? The true purpose of relationships, not the one that you were sold by Hollywood, right. by the media, right, right. not the one that your grandmama told you about her and falling head over heels, not yeah, that yeah, story. Yeah. The true purpose of relationships, which is the development of you. Every relationship is the greatest opportunity for you to become the highest, greatest expression of self. Yep. Every relationship. Yep. So there's nowhere in there that says a relationship is for you to extract, you know, your self-esteem, your self-worth to be validated. Nowhere does it say that. It says the purpose of a relationship is to develop you. So if that's the starting point, if that's the basis, then when you have a fixation in your mind that I'm going into a relationship to become the best version of myself, everything is a tool to move towards that. So when there's an argument, frustration, you can reflect back and say, what is this saying about me? Right. How am I feeling? And let's say, you know, you're, you're feeling jealousy or envy instead of saying, you know, you're making me feel jealous, right? Or projecting those emotions onto the other individual. You now start to say, what's it in me that's being triggered right now, right? right? Everything becomes a tool for our development. Right. And so when it comes to our relationship with our dream, I believe it's the exact same. When we start to ask ourselves, how is this working on me? Like for myself, I used to be so resentful, even up till recently, I didn't realize subconsciously, I was resentful with myself because I wasn't, again, fully committed. I was married and I was I was loyal, but I wasn't faithful. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's a difference. Yeah. I was loyal like a dog, yeah. right? But I wasn't faithful yeah. because a dog will go and lick anybody. Yeah. But it's going to come back to the yeah, owner. Yeah, yeah. I say a cat is faithful. Yeah. It ain't going to like everybody. It, it probably won't like anybody. Yeah. But the one person it's for, it's going to ride for forever. Yeah. Right? And so for me, I said, man, I was loyal to my dream, which is I'll, kept, I'll continue to come back to yeah. it. But I wasn't faithful where my eyes were only set on it. Right. right? right. And so I was disappointed because I didn't get what I was supposed to get. And only a faithfulness, which is a devotion, only from that space do we actually get the fruits of our labor. That's so true. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, that's why we're disappointed. That's You not getting the result, like you said, it was the best season you had because you put more into yourself and it worked on you more than yeah. you've ever worked yeah. on yourself before, yeah. right? It wasn't just the time. It was what you had to do to get right. there, which was you disciplined yourself in different ways. You probably ate different. You had different conversations with yourself on a day-to-day yeah. basis, right? Yeah. You avoided certain conversations well, you, you know, more than you well, would. Yeah, and what you do is you actually, like in that case, using that case as a, as the as the parallel, is you mm. you you stop fighting with it about every little thing. Yes, right. You so you wow. say you're not you're not you're not and resentful is a is a word I think that that I have been really really sitting with in my in my life especially recently i'm resentful of a lot of things but it comes back to how you're seeing yourself through through your relationships in real life yeah and with, your, with your own visions right and once once you let go of the expectations and the resentment where you don't get what you want and you frame it in that it's all part of me growing and that's what yes. i was doing i was like i was accepting that it's all part of me growing as a football player. Mm-hmm. All of it, right? There, yeah. there is no, there is no beginning and end. There is no stop and start. It's all kind of just intertwined in my growth. So I don't need to get wow. ready for August fifteenth when we do our forty yard dashes. I'm just ever evolving. Mm-hmm. And once you do that, like you said, once you do that, and you're just faithful to the the the, the dream and the process and the relationship of going wherever it goes as you grow through it. It becomes mm. much more seamless, and it becomes a loving relationship both ways, right? Mm. It comes, it, both ways. So now you now you don't resent it. Now you love it, and every part of it becomes enjoyable. Like even the arguments so with good. your with your vision, your dream become enjoyable because yeah. you're like, okay, I'm growing through that. Okay, okay, you know, I'm, I'm getting better through that, and you don't see. And again, I didn't know this back then. I, I know I, yeah. I, I I know it better today. I was going to ask if you were conscious of like this entire process no, no while way. you were in it. No way. Uh. No way. I mean, I consciously told myself I wasn't going to worry about the results anymore. 
Okay. Right. That was conscious because I said, look, man, I played yeah. well last year. Right. Uh-huh. And, I mean, yeah, these guys were faster than me, but I didn't get beat for any t- for a touchdown all year. So why would I why would I hold this barometer in such in such status when mm. what that's supposed to measure in terms of me being a good football player didn't mesh? Mm. Mm. Right? There's, there's guys on my team who are faster than me who I played over. Yeah. There's guys on my team who are stronger than me who I played over. So why would I hold this yeah. this this barometer in such elite status when what it measured, again, what it measured didn't make sense because it didn't measure a better football player, which was my vision. I wasn't a power lifter or in, in track and field. So once I let go of this fact that I was going to even let that bother me and just focus on being a better football player, it just changed cha- It changed the dynamic of our relationship between me and my so I want to st- I want to stay on this because you're probably the first person who introduced me to this to a way it made sense for me or it stuck which is for a lot of different yeah. things but specifically it was about like non-attachment with the result mm-hmm. right which is close to impossible to do if you have no incentive to do so yeah. right it's like of course we're humans we are you know physically inclined right. we're sensory based why would we not base our worth, our value, et cetera, off of what we see and what other people right. perceive, right? But I remember in your boot camp, you used to tell people who were looking to lose weight specifically, um, you would tell them not to watch the scale, right? And you were probably the first person I ever heard say that, but then also give a backing reason. Yeah. And you said, like, not maybe in these exact words, but you alluded to, that when you watch the scale, you become more obsessed with the number on the scale as opposed to the actual change yep. of your body composition. Yep. And that was so deep for me because you're right. It's like I could miss that. Look, I'm getting more muscle on me. I'm getting more toned. I'm actually building up. But then I'm looking at the scale and the numbers aren't going yeah, down. Exactly. So, you know, there's there's kind of this juxtaposition when you start to look at the results. Even, you know, I started kind of putting this into different uh places in my life years later of course right but i started seeing man like the number in your bank account or you know the number on your following etc it's like okay so is the message matter any less because not as many people saw yeah, exactly. it like i really had to sell myself on yeah. and ask myself yeah does the message matter any less because less people saw right. it or less people liked it right and i thought to myself how i'm living it would seem so that the more likes there are, that the more traction there is, right. that the more engagement there is, it means that it is a more important message or that it is more um, it's more potent, it, it is more transformative. Yeah. Right? But what really switched that for me was, again, the dynamic that you introduced to me and also realizing that, like, some things, it's like it's about the right person seeing mm-hmm. it. So then yeah. this switched yeah. how I saw it. So look at this, right? If I put out a video... And it's seen by 10 million people, right? Huge traction. It's going all over the place, et cetera. And then if I put out a video and 10 people see it, but five of those people are executives at the biggest content companies on the planet. Thank you. And they all take a liking to it. And now they want to work with you. Which one of those matters? Like, yeah, you could say, well, 10 million, you probably have the odds. No, no, no. I'm saying, but what if the 10 people who saw it? Thank you. Five of them are those executives. Yeah. Which one has more potency? Which one mattered more? Right. Yeah. Right? It's still perception, of course. But for me, I'm like, you know what? Where my goals are set, what my dreams and aspirations, this one is the far greater success. Yo. And so I think that's what happens to us sometimes. And I want you to really dig into that because, again, I know there's a, a, a paradigm shift that has to happen for our audience to really realize, like, the, the journey is, you know, the, there's beauty in the journey or, like, in love with the process that's not just a cute saying that we right, have exactly. quoted on Instagram and pictures. That's real. No, like, it's totally it's, real. It, it affects the goals that you want. It affects what you actually want as an outcome. Right, right. And I'll, I'll dive into it. I'll, I'll, use that, I'll use that story as the premise, mm. right? Because that's a real thing. Mm-hmm. And people always get the physical part. You can start any of these chasing dreams things with physical fitness, right? Because everyone, everyone has that as one of their goals. Everyone. It's, it's universal, right? Yeah. So we all I have tell a people... <laughs> To, 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 to tweak your your uh, intro, I tell people not to weigh themselves unless they can do it unemotionally. 
Ooh, okay. Right? So, I, so I, I, I wear myself whenever I shower. So until I went to go with my, my dermatologist who said I was too hygienic, uh, that was up to four times a day I would shower, right? Uh, now it's at least two, maybe three. So whenever I shower, I weigh in. And I do it because I want to measure like what, what, what I did and how, how it impacted my weight. So, like a science. So if I, yeah, exactly. So if I work out, what happens? If I eat a lot of water, mm-hmm. what happens? If I eat carbs? So I can, over time, create these correlations between what I'm doing physically, what I'm, what I'm putting in my body uh, through food, how it impacts my weight, number one. Number two, I, I, can, I can better teach it when I do that. So if you can, if you can do it uh, unemotionally, then measure. Yeah. If you can measure the number of likes you get, unemotionally, you should yeah. probably measure it. That's a great point. Right? Yeah. So it's not like measuring your likes or your weight or your bank account is bad. It's number one, can you do it unemotionally? Right? That's a great number point. two, yeah. if you don't do it unemotionally and you do it as a as a scientist would do it, you understand just like just naturally that it's only one measure. Mm-hmm. Right? Which is why I say there's five dimensions to measure your to measure your growth. In fitness, right? The weight's mm-hmm. only one of them. How you feel is one mm-hmm. of them. How do you look mm-hmm. in the mirror is one of them, right? Wow. Body composition is one of them. Your actual yeah. uh, performance, are you stronger? Are you faster? Matters. Do you sleep better? All those things matter, right? That's and, a bar. I got to clock that in. I've never heard that before. I've never heard that Yeah, before. so That's so hard. so I, I, have a, I have like a sheet I print out for people that they can download that shows, you know, Five dimensions to measure your, your your overall growth, and only one of them is weight, right? The wow. other ones are all, all things that people. And what's crazy about it is is I tell people to prove my point that the weight is just some arbitrary number that even you don't really care about. I mean, you care mm-hmm. about it only if it's negative, mm-hmm. right? I always say I want you to I want you to look in the mirror before you before you all, all you viewers. Before you weigh yourself, look in the mirror. And I want you to do two things. Number one, tell me how you feel about how you look. And number mm. two, tell me if you can guess in what direction your weight in, your weight went. Not even how far. What direction? Up or down? Right? Then weigh yourself. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, it, and I promise you, no more, half, the, half the time, you'll be wrong in the direction it went. Wow. Number one. Right, so you had no yeah. idea based on how you look, which the most important thing is how you look and how you feel. Correct. So based yeah. on how you look, you had no idea what the weight was. You were wrong. Mm. Right. Number two, if you felt bad about how you looked in the mirror, so you say you're naked and, you, you, and you're about to weigh in, you know, oh, I'm fat, right? And you weigh yourself and it's lighter. Do you feel mm. better? Wow. Probably not. You no, know, <laughs> because you're still seeing what right? you're seeing. Well, let's say yeah. this. Let's say you look in the mirror, and you're like, oh, I am losing weight a little bit. My, my stomach does feel mm. tighter. My arms a little bigger, right? And you weigh yourself, and you're a pound heavier. Do you feel better still? Wow. So it only goes in one direction. Right? If you if you have, uh, you know, 100 bucks more in your account, or you got, you know, eight more followers today, you don't really feel bad. I mean, I mean, I feel good. But if you got eight fewer followers, <laughs> exactly, you, know, you feel goes, terrible. Now. The emotion only goes <laughs> one way. And what relationship would you want to be in if the emotion only went one direction? Oh wow! So if you can do it un- unemotionally, then yes, you should do it, right? But then after that, what you have to do is you have to say, you know what? What does it mean? Mm. Right? What does it mean? Like what? What mm. does? My, my weight going up mean? What yeah. does my, you know, my followers going up or down mean, right? And if Correct. that means you dive into a deeper understanding of the relationship, then that is better for you, right? Mm-hmm. If you can do all of that from a space of, like you said earlier, I think you said it perfectly, from a space of I am evolving in this relationship to figure out more about me. Yeah. You know what I mean? If you do that openly and honestly, yeah. then everything that happens is just another opportunity to learn more. Okay, I, I got, I got, I got bigger, but I'm working out. Okay, so, so why? So, it's, a, it's, it's a natural desire to just learn more about 
everything along the way of the journey. This episode of the DNA of Greatness is brought to you by Aquarius Wave Apparel. In a world filled with complexities, what we yearn for most is simplicity. Well, this is your answer to simplicity. You said two things that are so key. Number one is what does it mean to you? And this aspect of like the stories we tell ourselves, right? I often say pain is inevitable. It's the feeling of the physiology or, you know, a biological reaction. But suffering is the story we tell right. about that pain, yeah. right? Yep. And that's why it's prolonging. And so it's funny that you said that because you actually hacked my brain right now <laughs> because, or my reality, because even in finances, like, Never before have I been so meticulous about watching my numbers financially as well as even like digitally, et cetera. Yet it's the least emotional investment I've ever had. And I'm actually using it as a tool of mastery. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's like I'm a master of my finances. And what does a master of their finances do? They track every, it doesn't matter if three cents came in that day. Like I'm tracking that three cents and where it came from and where, you know what I mean? Like, and there's a system for it, et cetera. And again, Back in the day, it used to be like uh, like the stock market, right? Uh, I talked to I talked to Mama Maria. Shout out to Mama Maria. That's a, a coach's beloved. Yes. And we're at the symposium, and we're talking about this new app that they have for the kids, like where you can see their grades oh in real gosh, time. Yes. And basically, I was telling her it's like it's like the stock market. It is totally you know? is. because your your emotions are going up and down so with true. whatever yes. change yes. happens. Regardless of even if it's reflecting reality or yeah, not. Yeah, and oftentimes it's not. Easy it's not. <laughs> the team this test yet. This ain't homework game been turned in yet. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Teachers ain't got caught up. And I know that on my side because my girl's a teacher. So it's like sometimes five things haven't gone yeah. in today. Yeah. The parent looks and now their kid has an F, right? So there is that aspect, which is what story are we telling ourselves. But what I really wanted to then uh, step into is this thing about, ironically, even though it's love and hate, is becoming non-emotional about your dream, right? Like, even in a relationship, it's funny because when you start to mature in relationship to people, in your intimate relationship, you start to realize, like, what we call love, this emotionality, which really is not love. It's like infatuation, lust, uh, desire, fear, anxiety, all these different aspects that we call love. That's not what makes a relationship last, right? So, you know, the old school cast, they said, what love's got to do with it. Yeah. Right? Yeah, <laughs> or like true. love don't pay the bills exactly. or like or love don't, you know yeah. what I mean? Like yeah. love don't make nothing last. But I believe, yes, true love, unconditional love, a godly agape love, that's different. But what we call love, this emotionality, right? right? Romance right. is well, a good exactly. word for it. Romance is not what keeps a relationship, right? right? It's not... Uh, Valentine's Day. It's not the flowers that you got every now and then. It's not the little compliment that you said every now and then. Right? It's first and foremost the basis of the decision that you made for you. Just like Coach, what you said, I I would not go a morning without making my family these ketones, you know what I mean? And my wife the coffee, etc. That's a commitment you made in yourself and there's no emotion tied to it. And so I think this is so important for our audience to grasp is though you are in a love-hate that polarity really comes from a place of you're too invested in the result. So you end up right, becoming emotional. Right, right, exactly. And you can actually be in love or you can be passionate about what you're doing without being pulled and swayed. Right. Because I used to think the opposite. I used to think, man, if I'm passionate, that means if things are going bad, like I got to be in the dumps. If things are going up, like, yeah. you know, I'm up with yeah, it. Yeah. But then I realized like that's unsustainable. Like that's burnout. That's true. You know, that's you, you, you become crushed. When you show up at the award show and you didn't win that, you know, award, even though you got the number one best selling album right, in the country. Right, right. Right? Right. So that's something I, I want to dive into, Unc. And I have a question as far as are you in a process where you have like are you still in a very emotional state when it comes to the dream that you are now bringing into fruition? Right? That's a great question. Um that's a great question because um It's funny because, you know, I, I think in many ways it started off differently than my other dreams, mm. right? And, and and Maria, my Maria, Maria and I have been married for 20, going on 22 years. 22? Wow. 20, yeah, 22 years. Um, Damn. Uh, actually, it's 22 years. 
in April. It was 22 years. Um, uh, and damn. And our relationship, you know, was was much different than when I met somebody at 12 years old or 14 years old or 16 years old or, t- or whatever, right? Yeah. So it started off as you get older. That 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 window of just romanticizing the relationship is different anyway, right? Yeah. So when you're 15, it's like. You, you want to throw up when you see somebody, right? Oh my God, like being <laughs> older, it's just different, right? So football was the, the equivalent of like a, a 12, 13 year old falling for his first love, right? Or a mm. girl, you know, a teenage girl falling for her first love. And so my vision to, uh, to use all those, all my tools to become a speaker never started off like that. In fact, it was kind of scary because I, I, I didn't I didn't grow up wanting to speak because my stutter, right? So I was like, man, are you sure, yeah. God? You sure? You want me to be speaking? So um, it was never like, oh, my God, oh, I, 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 I envisioned doing things. But even even in my vision, it was a, it's still and always has been, even from day one, a nervous love, right? Of, of just, mm-hmm. oh, my God, I have to go on stage. And do my and do God's work, but that vision, even as I see it, and it gives me some joy. That vision scares me. Uh, wow! But over time, it's almost reverse, mm. right? As I learn more about myself, as I become more vulnerable, as the fear items, the things that make me afraid of doing it, um, become less scary to me. I almost reverse it. So now I almost romanticize it about it more than I did in the beginning, which wow. is super, which is super weird. Right. But I think part oh. of my ability to get there and you, and you, you hear, you hear like, you'll hear old, like couples who've been married 30, 40 years. You hear them say similar things. They'll say, you know, after 22 years, I'm in love again. Right. Yeah. And, and I feel about him or her, in a way that I, I never have, right? But Absolutely. to get to that point, you had to do some things like commitment, like you said, like like being faithful to it um, in order to get to, to that part of the pendulum where it swings up again. And one yeah. way to do that or the way to do that is to have these standards you have for yourself um, mm-hmm. in, in the relationship context. But also the way I do it, the way I frame it is you have you have controller goals. You have goals from here to your main vision. So I don't use the word goal very often in terms of how the world uses it. I call that a, vi- a vision or a dream, right? I call the steps that you deem necessary to get there. I call those controller goals. Mm. So a goal, how can a goal be something a goal? How can a, how can something be a goal if you have no direct control over it? Correct. Right. How can your goal be the? My goal is to be, uh, to be on stage uh, at SAP Center in two years. How can that be a goal when you have no direct control over it? Well, it's, it's mm-hmm. I do. Well, how do you control that? Well, I wh- whatever you say next are the things you can control. Oh, Not okay. that that's piece. control the goals. Not that piece. Yeah. So, yeah. so, so, so with my weight training, right? My goal was to run a four four forty. Mm-hmm. Right. So when I said that, I had no I had no direct control over that. But what I could do was say, OK, what do I think? What do I deem to be the necessary steps to run a four four? OK, mm-hmm. uh, I have to be lighter. I have to have more muscle and less body fat. I have to get up and train and do sprint work twice a week. I have to have a you know leg capacity to leg press 400 pounds, whatever I think those mm-hmm. things are. Goes back to my, my five steps. Step four is learn. Learn those things. And then you get caught five up. Five steps in to those greatness, things. by the way, guys. Huh? Five steps to greatness. Five, sorry. Five steps, five to, steps greatness. to greatness. Just for anybody, right? yeah. Want, exactly. We're going to lodge that in people's heads. Want, believe, go, mm-hmm. learn, persist. Mm-hmm. Right? So so step four is learn about your, about your craft. So as you do that, then you write down the steps necessary to get to your dream or vision. And you get so caught up in that that a you lose sight of what the of what the vision is because you because you just yeah. you know I've already decided what the vision was now I'm doing the work to get there so now I'm so caught up in the in the steps that that part takes care of itself 
Mm, right? If you understand how how a basketball game is won, yeah. right? Run full speed, court in the end, right? Box out, right? Mm. Take good shots, communicate mm. on defense. If you get caught up in those things, the score will take care of itself. Yeah. You don't even need to keep score, right? So that's how I do it. I, I get caught up in the steps. So with my dream, right, even though it's it's more romantic now than it was when I even first thought about it, I get so caught up in the day-to-day of it that I don't even let that part of it worry me or excite me or anything. I just get caught up in, in the day-to-day. And occasionally I'll, I'll, I'll sit back and look at it, but then I'm right back to my steps of yeah. the journey. That's so powerful. So for me, it's, again, you know, we always talk about process, right? And being in love with the process. And even what you just broke down, like controller goals sound like, what is the the order? What is the process yeah. mm-hmm. of getting to this yep. thing? And that's actually very even helpful for me. Like though sometimes I hear something a thousand times, it takes a thousand and one time, you know, for it to really seep in is everything has like a reverse engineering process. And you're talking about like that? everything has its process, right? Huh? What do I call that? Not the five steps, is it? No. Not the five steps of greatness. You know, all kind of stuff. Systematizing your dream. Yes. Systematizing your dream. That's everything right. And this is, again, something you ahead. always bring down. You said it. Your dream, everything that you want in your life is systematizable, right? Yep. And I'm even seeing it more now. Again, it's like, you know, how do they make the next greatest chocolate, they take the one that exists right now, you know, what is it? And they break it down to elements. Yep. And so in our relationships, I feel like is one of the areas where we spend the least amount of intentional time actually planning out those steps of what makes a successful relationship, right? Because it's one of those things we're so emotional about mm-hmm. and emotionally invested that we almost write out the logical aspects of it, right? We right. just kind of blame it on right. the cosmos. I just right. felt head over heels right. in love. All of a sudden, I caught myself in a situation with this psycho person, right? <laughs> That's how yeah. we like to view it. <laughs> but, but in reality, it's like if you could go into a relationship or into you know whatever dynamic it may be for you, and you can say, there are exact steps I can take for the most successful outcome of this thing, right? Yeah. Why the 50% yeah. divorces is because more than 50% of people live unintentional lives. Right. They only are, are intentional about maybe their degree, in school because yep. somebody gave them a roadmap yep. or they're intentional about their job because somebody gave them, you know, instructions of what to do, a manual, whatever, yep. maybe training apparatuses. But when it comes to our relationships, specifically our relationship with our dream, I feel like that's when we start getting in this like weird, nebulous, gray area. Right. But really right. there are steps and processes. And for me, it took also letting go of my pride to say, T, like you want the mindset of a person who makes a hundred thousand dollars a day, right? Yeah. 37 million. First, I realized I didn't even know how much that was actually a year. I had underballed it. And it's like, how are you saying you want 100,000 a day when you don't even know what that is a year? You don't know what that is a quarter. Right, you don't know what that right, is. Right, like, exactly. Like, you don't know you That's don't. so true. You just, it yeah. just sounds cute to you, yeah. yep. right? So then when I really broke down those numbers and I said, oh, which companies are doing this? And there's a multitude. Yeah, exactly. And I said, what type of individuals are doing this, doing what I do, right? And then when I'm there, I say, what kind of mentality does this person have? And then that also gives me my instruction manual and even how I move about life how I show up in this world, right? Am I somebody who's going to make a decision A or decision B? Right. You know, are 80% of the people in that space who are running a business at that capacity, you know, within my own area per se, are they drinking Coca-Cola or are they drinking a water right now? Like something that simple, something that right? Simple. Yeah, exactly. Are they, are they choosing this yep. or are they choosing that? And all of those then create that identity. But that's... um. That's an aspect. If you want to dive into that, we can. But no, for real. That so, also so, came up. Yeah, because you, because mm-hmm. you. I mean, you're right. In our relationships, I, I think part of it is we don't like we don't want to. And when you said that, it hit home to me. It's like you don't want. Mm-hmm. It's two things. You don't want to dilute, or you think you're diluting the romantic part of it yeah. by taking it seriously. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean, you're like you're like well yes. Well, if I talk about the numbers too much and about the business behind being a musician, then I'm kind of losing what really got me into it was, was, you know, yeah. rapping for the people, you know, or just or being, a man, or being a woman of the, of, of the, of the voice, the voice of the woman. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, yeah. you think, like, I sit down and really figure out what my expenses are to go on tour, 
what my expenses mm. are to get stu- time, you know, studio time, and how do I make sure I, I, I earn enough revenue from selling my CDs in the back of a car to make sure it's like that part of it. You almost don't want to do it because it it, it deromanticizes it, and you're afraid that if you do that, you will lose the energy to, co- to keep pushing. You know that's what I mean? I, I think that's where it comes from. Wow. And then number two, I think yeah. that, that we, part of us, either either by by our our you know our upbringing or or our current environment, but but the stories we tell ourselves mm. are stories that have have been put in us that are creating this narrative inside of us that says you don't really need to be too serious about that because that's not where you're going to go. It's cool to, 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 to dream about it, but you're not going to become that. Right. So we're, yeah. so we're reluctant to sit down and really map out because we don't really believe it in our subconscious. Right. Our story, the, the, the five steps of greatness, right? Yeah, believe. exactly. We don't believe it. That part so, is missing. Like for mm-hmm. me, like until the last couple of months, when you when you and I sat down and really started started really diving into, like what it would look like for me to be a thought leader, and to be you know somebody who's identified as a greatness coach and speaker, who who delivers that message in workshops, symposiums for student athletes, uh, and leadership seminars. Until we did that, I was just like. It was just like, oh, you know, I love, I love speaking. I love being a speaker. Yeah. You know, like you tell, you know, I love but, speaking. But, I but, love rapping. But as soon as we sat down and said, okay, well. That's funny. Should we get married this spring or next spring? Right? If we get married, am I going to work first while you go to school? Ooh. And so those are the things that make the marriage work. Yeah. Right? And we don't want to do that. We just want to enjoy our time as newlyweds and like, you know, send out announcements. So I think part of it is the same thing. Like we, we love it until it's time to figure out how it's going to work. Mm. And, and it's, and, and the reason the, the divorce rates are so high is the same reason our relationship divorce rates are so high is because we we fail to sit down. I'm going to say it again without stuttering. The reason our divorce rates are so high is the same reason our relationship divorce rates are so high is we fail to oh. sit down and figure out how once we get married, it's gonna work. Wow. And we don't do that. Uh okay, now this will hit different. And the reason it did is because I'm now kind of getting um like sometimes I get the slideshow of Uh-oh. times that I've done exactly that thing. Yeah. And it's every other relation besides where I am right yep. now. It's the first time where I've counted the cost. Like there's a scripture which talks about before you build the building, count the cost, right? Know what it's gonna know what's gonna be necessary, and it's so crazy. For years, on every aspect of my life, I avoided just simply counting the cost as if it was gonna hurt or take away from the creative process. Right. But now, in maturity, at least I hope it's maturity. I'm now realizing you actually you give the thing that you want to do more substance and legs when you take care of everything else. It's a part of that, right? It's kind of like saying, "Well, I just want the flower," but you don't want like how it's gonna germinate. That entire unfolding process, right? The cultivation, this, that, and the third. It's worse than that. And it's worse than that. No, get into it. Because I'll say, I, I, I'll, I'll say it fast and let you continue. It's it's like saying, I'm going to have a baby and I'll figure it out. If and how many selfish, of those do we have? That's selfish. And how many? Ooh. I'll be a father, right? But, but, but God forbid I figure out how to take care of it ahead of time. How to how to how to give it diapers? How to give it you know uh, uh, um, uh, food? How to give it clothing? How to give it schooling? Right? God forbid I, I I at least think about that before I I say I'm a father. Oh my! You know what I mean? Okay. That's a whole no. That's a whole mic drop right there. Nah, that's it. That's <laughs> that is the severity of it. Because again, that's exactly what we're doing as a society. Yeah. At scale. Yeah. Right, yeah. we're having oops babies with our dream, right. and then we fall off seven yeah. weeks later, or seven yeah. years later, etc. Yeah. So, that being said, I wanted to get into it. It actually, it enhances every single time, and I can say this even within my own experience. Right, like when I am doing the projections and I am getting down into the nitty gritty of the details that might not be just being on camera. You're creating the business that's going to allow you to be on camera 10,000 right. more times right. in greater scale yeah. and have an impact on people in a greater way, right? Your service is always going to be multiplied 
when you are willing to, again, count that cost. So anybody, even if you're in a relationship and you're listening to this from like a relationship, relationship context, because some ears will hear it. How oh, right, exactly. Yeah. It. Right, exactly. It's still to say this, getting these things figured out is going to improve your relationship, right? I want to say that straight up looking directly yeah. into the camera. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Romance is a beautiful thing, but planned and calculated romance will keep you together. Yep. Because all of a sudden now, oh man, you know, we're just infatuated, et cetera. You know what's helpful is when you know that on Friday, y'all got a date. Yeah. That's helpful. Yeah. Right? You know helpful, that, you know. What's more helpful is knowing that I expect you to cook most of the days. I'll take Tuesday and Thursday. Co- See, Instead there we go. Assuming that you cooking all the time. <laughs> and then now both y'all resent. Right, exactly. For two different exactly. reasons. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly, man. <laughs> so it, again, it's like that. It comes back to what you said in the very beginning, which is like communication with your dream. And I believe your dream is always telling you what it needs. Always. Right? It's literally always saying, "Hey, bro, like take this step. Okay, do this or do that." Right? And that's where it comes to like getting out of the comfort zone and then reintroducing an aspect you talked about, Unc, is is protection of your dream. Now, right? Like when you get into a relationship. Most dreams or, excuse me, most relationships are deteriorated from the inside. Mm -hmm. However, there is also susceptibility of external factors getting into or seeping into that relationship, right? Just like uh, an intimate relationship. If you let other people on the outside be the main voices or even talk into your relationship, give advice on your relationship, what should you do, what should you not do, that person's not for you, et cetera, et cetera. Those things can seep right. in and ruin the relationship. So I want to get into, as we get into the home stretch of this thing, is protecting our dream at all costs. Yeah. Protecting yeah. that relationship with our dream at all costs, even on those days that you hate it. Yeah, right? and, Shout and, out and to you Jackie have to. And Amari. You have to because, like you said, you know, a lot of it is internal, but but there are there are external forces that will always jeopardize and compromise that direct link between you and your and your dream, right? So mm. if you envision it a few ways, right? If the dream's big enough, there will be naysayers. Yeah. Like there will be people who who don't agree with you. Right? So again, I'm always trying to put it in frameworks, right? So imagine this. You know, one of my things is like don't give me advice on how to coach my son if you don't have a son. Mm. Don't give me advice on how to on how to be a husband if you ain't married. Wow. So if you ain't chasing a dream of any kind, right? Yes, I'll listen to like something you have to say, but not for very long, unless you're in the arena. Yeah. Right. One of my quotes so is good. is if you ain't in the arena with me, shut the hell up. Mm. Right? Love me, support me, whatever. But if, if you ain't in the arena, and can speak directly to what I'm going through and trying to make this marriage work, yeah. then we can hang out, we can talk, we can do whatever. But in terms of this, right, I can't let what you think seep into that. That's so so many people don't get where I'm at, mm. right, in my, in, my, in my dream chasing. And that's okay, right? But don't talk to me about what I'm chasing or what I'm going after in, in any negative context, if you ain't doing the same thing, right? Because I won't let that seep into my, into my mindset for very long, right? The same yeah. way I won't let you tell me how to, how to, how to scold my daughter when you don't have mm-hmm. a daughter, yeah. right? So um, we have to be cognizant of, and, and a lot of it's natural. A lot of, again, going back to previous episodes, a lot of it is our friends or our family protecting us. Like they don't want to see us fall. They don't want to see us get hurt. They don't want to see us, uh, or it's from other feelings. It might, it might be some, some resentment. And part of you yeah. in your dream is understanding and accepting that. Like, like I get, I'll use the example of, of, of a real relationship. So yeah. there are many people who might see my son and I and what we have over the last 16 years as being something beautiful. Right, mm-hmm. so anything in that relationship that that doesn't seem perfect, a part of them actually enjoys commenting about it to me. Yes, because yes. now 
whatever part that made them feel weird about about how cool me and Amari are, right, and made them feel bad about about maybe what they have going on. Now it's different. Now mm -hmm. you're like, okay, Bobby ain't perfect, and so mm -hmm. I'll I'll take some of it because I'm, I'm trying to grow and learn. And oft, oftentimes, oftentimes I already know, I'm already feeling what they're telling me anyway, right? But I won't take too much of it because absolutely. Because oftentimes that person either does not have a son or or I can recognize how as a human being, right, I am too. As a human being, they're responding, at least in part, from their emotions about what they see we have. So yeah, it's an all of that must be considered when you Absolutely. are dealing with people and other relationships um, outside of the one you have with your dream. So not everybody loves my idea of being a speaker. Not everybody thinks it's smart for me to let go of a of a fitness business that I'm, I'm good at, or before that finance, which I was good at, to pursue something that I think God wants me to do. This episode of the DNA of Greatness podcast is brought to you by the BTY Symposium. The BTY Symposium is an immersive workshop aimed at getting the student athletes the tools they need to achieve their ultimate dreams. Whether a one day or multiple day format, the symposiums provide an all-inclusive environment that nourishes athletes physically, mentally, and emotionally. Now back to the show. So I, I, I want to press in a little bit on like the example you gave of like somebody seeing your relationship with your son, right? And that envy or jealousy. Um, and this is something I often speak on because it is one of the most common things that we don't bring out to surface in most cases. Yeah. Is yeah. yes, it is a no normal human response to feel either envy or jealousy right. towards those things that we desire. Right. Right. And when you are in a state of insecurity, whether it's conscious or subconscious, you're going to project that insecurity onto those who are displaying the things that you desire. Right. So I remember, you know, there used to be a, a time when I would see somebody in a Lambo. And the first thought that would pop up is judgment. Oh, yeah. And they think there's somebody. Yeah. Or, you know, I wonder what type of person they are. Yeah. I automatically had assumptions yeah. about why they bought the Lambo. Right. And I promise you, for the first time ever in life, as I know something switched within my spirit, I saw a Lambo down the street from here. Now, where I live, it's not like metropolitan or anything, yeah. right? It's like suburbs. I saw an all-white Lambo, brand new um, Aventador. Slick as all get out. And I looked at it, and my I was like filled with joy. Wow. And I was like, man, that's me. For the first time, I didn't try it. I didn't like shift my consciousness. At that moment I saw it, I just was filled. And I was like, oh, that's a beautiful car. And I was like, man, I'll see myself in that one day. And I was even like proud of whoever was in it. Wow. Right? Wow. And it's crazy wow. because, again, that came from doing that inner work of dealing with those insecurities. Like right. when I'm triggered by coach and his son, why am I feeling that right, way? Exactly. It's probably because I wish I had that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's that's yeah. usually if not always the case. Exactly. Right? Yeah. If if I see somebody like why do we gossip about celebrities more than anybody else, more than our friends, families, more than our neighbors, is because they're people who have aspired to the highest level. They're the ones who are displaying to us or reflecting to us the very things that we desire most out of life, yep, yep, which is, yep. you know, freedom, independence, doing what we love to do for a living, right? Like whether it's real or not, it might be a facade, but still our own projection is gossip, us wanting to see them right. fall. Exactly. Right. Yeah. This, this, and even vicarious living through individuals. So I wanted to point to that because when it comes to protecting your dream, it's yes, understanding at one level that. You know, these are natural inclinations and instincts, but I've also come to the um, to the acceptance that it's OK to create those boundaries with individuals who continue to want to attack your dream. Right. Just like you would with a baby. If you saw somebody doing something funky with your kid, like you're automatically no, we're not going back to that. Automatically. House. Automatic. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it's no different with your dream. Like this is this is your baby. This thing is going to take care of your babies. It's going like. Your dream, I think sometimes we belittle it because it's like we see it as just the Lambo or we see it as just the oh, house totally, or whatever, yeah, but you're yeah, not yeah, understanding. Yeah. It's like this is the becoming of who you are. Right. This is like God being projected 100% right. through you, right? right? Your complete and absolute humanity. Your passion, your purpose, your dream, whatever you want to call it, is more important than even your own family. Right. Right. Why? Because without it, you're going to be resentful around your family. You're going to be a detriment to your family. You're right. going to be a danger to your family. Right? right? Yeah. And dreams and aspirations are what's built the society the around. Somebody's not going to drink. Right. Yeah. Everything is is a fulfillment 
of a of dream. dream. Everything exactly. in our society yeah. was somebody somewhere who made a decision to say, I'm going to follow that voice. And whoever has a, a contradicting voice, I'm going to stand up for my dream, like you said at first. But I'm so in love with my dream. That's my best friend. Yeah. That I will cut your ass off yeah, immediately. Exactly. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like again, and it's not from a place of I hate you, but it's from a respect for right. what I have. Right. Yeah. And and, and, and the, one day it's gonna bless you, the one who's hating on it right now. Yeah, and 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 I'll, I'm gonna look right in the camera and say this, right? Mm. When I when I speak Speaks about on. when I speak about um you know, people and you know, seeing my relationship or seeing this and not being, you know, and having emotions about it. I am not different, right? I, and I've, 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 I've told you, I've said on this podcast previously, like I'm, I'm fighting through my own resentment around things, mm. right? I, you know, I, I'm still in a place where I, I have to, I have to check my own emotions and my own thoughts when I see people doing well or making money, mm. and I resent. Well, I should have just stayed in finance, right? So, by no means am I on a pedestal saying that I'm doing this and, and, and people are looking at my relationships and my visions and, and they're, and they're causing me friction. What I am saying though, is that, is that I have to protect the vision I have for myself and my relationship with, yeah. with my dream. Number one, but number two in that is also me protecting me from me. Yes. Right. So number part, one, that's number one. I have to that's do that one. is because I know that I'm, my current state Involve Correct. some things that get me riled up, yeah. or get me in a wrong mental space. Right. Yeah. One of those is allowing people to take me back to how I thought yesterday and last week mm. and last month and put me in a box, like right? the same box I'm trying to get out of. That 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 makes me mad watching Housewives of New Jersey because they have all that money, right? I'm wow. not in a place yet where I can drive. I'm not a big car guy. But I'm not in a place yet where I can see somebody on Instagram or Facebook and see them vacationing and me not be resentful that I can't do that for my family yet. Right? So, so, so yes, yeah. I use it for fuel, but I'm not in a place to be judgmental. I'm only in a place to say, look, like, 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 like you, I need to protect my dream in a way that my dream knows I'm doing whatever I can to protect it, even if it's from me. Right, even if it's from me, and part of that is it, knowing it is that I can say because certain things, I can allow certain things to come into my into my thought process, and sometimes in certain contexts, I can't allow certain people. Into Coach, my context. the reason why I say it absolutely is us number one is because that voice that comes in is influencing us. Mm -hmm. So we're the one who's going to decide, man. Just like in the beginning of a relationship, right? Oh, I'm so in love. Like, this is the greatest thing that ever happened. And then you got a friend who's like, uh, are you sure? Like, do you see, you know, like, do you see who he yeah. kicks it with? Do you see the type? That's the, that's the most tender part of the relationship because now you're, you're questioning yourself. Right. It's not even the other right. person really. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Man, are you sure? Remember what happened last time? Remember yep. last time? Yep. That's the space that we're finding ourselves. Right. Now, I love that again, we are in a space where both of us are literally becoming in front of camera, like yeah. we're in our process, it's different. You know, you see Beatrice Cooley and after he's built the multi right, million exactly. dollar, you know, that's easy. That's easy business that. and Ed my led after he's built, but you're seeing us in real time. We are here with y'all going through this process with y'all and y'all will see the evolution and you're right. seeing the vulnerability of a coach, Bobby, and myself to say, look, feel some type of way. When we see that I was feeling some type of way. And then you're going to look back and see, wow, they're driving the very same thing. They said yeah. at one point, they were yep. resentful somebody else having. And this is a natural part of that process, just like a re any relationship. Right. You're going to go through jealousy, resentment, bitterness, frustration. Yep. Again, that's why I say hate, love, hate, because hate encompasses all of those quote unquote negative emotions. Yep. But I want to leave it at this note, and then you can give us a closer on is embrace all that comes with it. Like embrace the emotionality, embrace the roller coaster at first, because all of it is teaching you something. Yep. That's what we call shadow work, being willing to look at the dark aspects, the neglected aspects of ourselves. What your dream is really doing and how it's working in you, how it's worked in me, is to reveal aspects of myself that I had denied and neglected, to reveal insecurities that I had I didn't know I had, right? Because now I'm stepping into things that right. are completely outside of my comfort. Right. 
and there's no other choice if I'm going to do what I'm saying I want to do. Exactly. Yeah. Right. There's no other way. There's it forces you. It's like there there are a lot of things in this life which you can just do and hide behind. But when it comes to your specific vision, like your specific calling in life, it's going to call you into everything. Like it's going to everything's getting exposed. Right. Everything. Every aspect of everything, right? You're going to walk into rooms where you just feel like a nobody. Then you have to question, why do I feel like nobody? I thought it was, I thought it was healed. I thought it was taken care of. I thought that was done. Right. I thought that I was, you know, I wasn't a jealous person. I thought I wasn't an envious. I thought I wasn't this. When you start to think about your money mentality, man, I thought me and money were okay, but I didn't realize I had such a damaged relationship with money. Like your dream is going to show all of that. Yeah. Right. Because all of these aspects are. I guess holistically included in this kind of um, this package deal that we call the all of it, all of this it. vision for our life, all of it, and and I'll, I'll end with this. To. So, mm. so I drive, so so I live I live south of the Bay Area. For those who are watching mm-hmm. in other countries, uh, in California, so I drive north occasionally, and I go to to the city or I go to. The nearest town, which is a, a smaller city, San Jose, and twice a year when I come back, I'll go to all of our old houses. I go to my wife and I's first house, which is my was which, which was my parents' first home they bought, their very first home they bought. I was already out of college, uh, so I inherited their home, um, and then we had our, our daughter in that home, and then we bought our first house as a couple about a mile away from that home and then we and then we uh bought our house here that we're currently at um and then so i'll do that twice a year coming home even in my my current town i'll drive occasionally i'll drive the route that i drove when my kids were in elementary school or middle school and i'll drive the same route that i drove every day for four or five years and my point of that is I can literally put myself in the emotion in all those places, good and bad, right? I can remember how stressed I was when our first home that, uh, that my daughter was born in didn't have AC. And we had this, we had this big old box that you put ice in and was spit out like cool, cool air. And mm-hmm. we had a little a picture of us out in the front yard with a you know ghetto style with a little with a little uh, pool and a little water. She and I are in, the, in this pool trying to cool down. And I remember my son being born in our next home, our very first home we bought. I remember, you know, me having to drive, you know, you know, forty five minutes to work and how we, you know, we. So, and I remember being stressed as a new dad. And and my point is, I look back now. And I had this story I tell about about one more one more moment. Like if, mm-hmm. if you knew this was the last time you were gonna kiss somebody or call them or talk to them, you would treat it differently. Wow. And all of it is memorable. And all of it was important. Right? In the moment you never think that. Absolutely. You never not. think that. You never think that this no. diaper change or this late night with my with my kid with a fever, or this this argument with my wife, or this time my kids were fighting. You never think those are all. You never think you never you never think that you will miss those, or mm-hmm. that it's part of the journey, an important yeah. part of the journey. But you look back. My daughter's going into a third year in college now. My son's going into his last year of high school, and you realize all of it was necessary, and you can't change any of it. So what I ask you guys, the viewers, my parting, my parting comment, what I ask you guys to understand is why you're in this chase to, to your dream, why you're doing that push-up, why you're doing that sprint, why you're in the studio at 2 a.m., why you're, why you're going through writer's block, writing your song or writing your book, why you're still going through podcasts and videos and you feel like you can't talk, Coach Bobby, and you're still stuttering occasionally, right? Understand that this is your, this is your baby, and and as long as you honor the journey, all this stuff you're going through will be necessary and you will miss it. And I will miss at some point worrying about a podcast. Yeah. When I when I when I'm too big to do a podcast, right? Yeah. And so yeah. I want you guys to understand you're gonna make it, but while you're in it, I want you to just have oh. some peace, some peace with it. 
and just love that one day you're going to drive by these old these old houses and these old places and these old times and you're going to you're going to reminisce and understand it was all worth it and all necessary this is my message what you just said was for me like everything i'm literally looking around like this very room right now i'm like bruh you're gonna miss this you're gonna miss this you're gonna miss it man and and you're gonna look back at it like thank you thank you for that for that time i failed and that time I tripped, and that time I got cut, and that time, yeah, you're gonna think, you're gonna think, that's, that's a country song, I think, probably. <laughs> yeah, yeah, our first, our first yet, DNA of greatness country song. <laughs> if it ain't yet, it's got to be. Now, nah, folks, this is um, this has been my favorite episode so far. This has been so fruitful again, and I say my favorite because of the things that I walk away with. Yeah, right. Me too. That already hit, let alone what's gonna continue to marinate now. Um, we appreciate you guys for, you know, hanging with us, staying with us, learning with us, growing with us throughout this process. Uh, this is a very special pod because of what it represents. And it's like, you and I, uh, this is like years in the making, but also it's like a projection into our future, right? right? Like there's just so much here and it's everybody who's a part of that right. journey and that yep. process. So, you know. That being said, I um, want to create a window of opportunity just to let people know how they can get access to you. Because I think that matters most. It's like, okay, I hear where we are now and somebody has an urgent call to action. Like there's there's something they need to do next. So for yourself and then I'll go right after. Yeah, so, so guys, you know, reach you, access you, et cetera. Yeah, so please guys, follow me on social media, Instagram, Facebook, at Coach Bobby Bluford. Uh, CoachBobbyBluford.com is my, west, my website. On there, you can find access to me at my BTY symposiums or go to mm-hmm. btysymposium.com. And then I'm, I'm launching a, a whole new avenue of my workshops. So I have a whole new leadership, um, audacious leadership program I'm, I'm launching. And then I'm always doing workshops and speaking engagements. So coachbobbybluford.com um, and then social media at Coach Bobby Bluford. So that's um, symposium is predominantly for student athletes. Slash students, and then we have the leadership conferences, which are for for corporate. corporations, for mm-hmm. for organizations, parent clubs, mm-hmm. um, companies, schools. Uh, my very next one's going to be at a junior college uh, in California. So, any body of people, uh, if you're young, as 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 Aquarius said, the the student athletes student athlete symposiums are are perfect. If you're older in a working environment or a corporate environment. Um, my workshops and lectures on leadership uh, and team building uh, are what you want to go with. So coachbobbybluefer.com, we can work through the details of what your team or program needs um, and we can address them. Beautiful. And then as far as myself, I have finally finalized the uh, pieces to a coaching program that I'm putting together for a very specific type of person, a very specific space in their life, which is the people pleaser who is looking to embody that personal power, right? That codependent who is finally realizing that they want a fulfilled life. And the only way they can find that is through developing that self-worth, that self-validation mechanism that allows them to live their life to the fullest, right? To that greatness. And so the way in which you can reach that, this upcoming Wednesday, I'm launching the webinar. The webinar is going to lead to a call, the call to see whether or not we're both a fit for one another to get into the program. So make sure to uh, keep your ears tuned, keep your eyes tuned in for that as it's rolling out for the next week and, you know, indefinitely. So that's how you can reach me again, symposium and the leadership conferences on coach's side. And we will keep you guys updated with anything else that's going on on our side, just how to access us. But again, just really stay tapped in, stay tuned in. You know, the content is a plethora, but when you're ready to take those next steps, do not be afraid to invest in yourself and take the step necessary. We are open right now. We have the bandwidth right now. And as we grow, one day it's going to be, you know, teams and people doing these things. So as you have access right now, take advantage of that. Take right? advantage. Yep. So that being said, um, you know, let's get great. Let's be great, guys. Love you guys. Let's Love do it. Guys. Love you guys. Peace. Be it now, and then it will come to you. You can't wait till you get it to become that thing.